Hello. In this second look video, I'm going to talk about the savings account. So let's start by loading it. And I'm going to use BAT as my example. Now first, as always, let's disable the signal line. Now, the deviation. This is the percentage by which the system accumulates. Let's go back to the beginning of this cycle. Okay, as you can see, here we sold off, and then it opened up another entry. Every time the deviation is met, this red line drops down by that level. Now, there is a bit of a difference in that this is not an absolute figure. That is important to understand, and I'm going to zoom in to demonstrate that. Whenever a deviation is taken, the savings account module has a defensive property built into it to ensure that the entire candlestick is below the deviation boundary. So in this case, our deviation is 1%. That means this is our average. 1% drop is right here. This candle is below that drop, and so it takes a purchase. Now, for the purposes of the process, the closing price is what is used to calculate the next deviation. So 1% of this closing price is now the boundary. Now, this is the step method. And I'm going to go into more detail between the step and price methods but I want to cover the basic context first. So every time a purchase takes place, the deviation drops. That means the average drops. That also means the threshold for which a profit is needed drops. This is the accumulation state. Now, the green line is your profit. The profit, of course, is again on the basis of the average. In this case the default is 1% in both directions. So if the price action goes 1% above the average, a profit is taken. But again, Jackrabbit uses a defensive boundary so that the candlestick must be completely above the take profit boundary. I did this specifically to take into account exchange slippage. Slippage is the process for which once the signal is generated, then it is sent to your trading bot. From there, your trading bot needs to send the signal to your exchange. This process takes a few seconds, usually in the order of milliseconds, but under heavy stress, busy days, high internet congestion, it can take quite a bit of time from the standpoint of when a transaction takes place to when it is executed. 
So these boundaries are put in place to protect the profit as much as possible, even if the market changes direction against your favor. So we're going to zoom out and I'm going to scroll back to the end. As I said, this is the step method. We're going to eliminate the price method shortly. Sideways breaker. When a market is in a channel, this is a channel. When you're between the average and the deviation and it just hangs here. This is a sideways market from the standpoint of the savings account. You can turn this on and it will break that sideways motion by artificially taking a purchase. Notice that it changed the deviation line and it lowered the average and the take profit. There is a consequence to using this process. That consequence is that you lose the ability to mandate a forced budget. With the step method, comma, a forced budget means you can actually limit your exposure deliberately. Using the sideways breaker may help end these kind of situations early, but you need to account for these additional purchases in your budget. Now we come to the most important part. When to exit. For here, you see the maximum number of purchases was 18 for this particular run. Let's move up the time frame and see if we can find a run with a significant higher threshold. And as you can see, the more we climb, the higher the threshold gets. So 24 max positions. This is a way that you can calculate, predict, and plan your budget. I'm going to go back down to the five minute time frame because that is roughly 17 days worth of trading. Now, as you can see, it's been stuck in a sideways motion for about three days. You can use an exit, or excuse me, a sideways breaker. And you can see that it changed from 13 to 23. So it added roughly $111 additional cost to your budget if you're using a 100, excuse me, if you're using an $11 position size. So as you can see, while it helps you accumulate more and lower the average, it also increases your budget exposure. But now, I want to limit this. Right now, this says I have 13 as my maximum. I generally round up to the nearest 10. So taking 13, I will round that up to 20. Then I will double it. 20 rounded up is or doubled is 40. So my exit position is, all right, where'd it go? My exit position will be 41. Okay, that kind of did a weird step there, but not a big deal. So, 41. 
I want 40 positions for my purchases. Now, 40 times 11 is 4,400. Round up to the nearest 100. I have a budget of $500 for 41 positions. So, now I have a fixed limit. My budget is absolute $500 for this coin at the 5-minute level. Now this again, as I said, using the step position. You can see the deviation drops in clear, organized steps. Now let's demonstrate the price difference. And I'm going to do this in a side by side. That way you can see the process appropriate to the same coin. Let's get back here. Let's change this to BATUSD. And I'm going to clear this out since I don't know what state it's in. I want only default settings. So let's go back to the savings account. Okay, here we are, the same coin, the same time frame. Now, we've already established an exit position of 41. But this time, I'm going to use a price method so that we can see side by side just how the price and the step method actually differentiate. Okay, let me get these lined up. The nice thing about this technique is you can line up both charts at once. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see, the number of buys for the step method is 13. That is, so far, it has taken 13 steps. Whereas here, the number of buys is 7. And the maximum is 40. So, 40 different purchases. Versus 13 different purchases. Now, let me back this up a little bit to a buy signal on the step. Notice that the steps come down in exact positions. They don't just happen magically at some random point. These are calculated to exhaust 100% of the volume of the coin. So, at 100 positions, at 1%, you have exhausted the entire volume of this coin. It is a fixed, absolute, unmoving situation. You know 20 steps at 1% is going to be 20% of volume. If you have a deviation of 2% and you have 10 steps, you have taken 20% volume of the coin. Very fixed, very easy to calculate. The price method doesn't do that. The price method always maintains the distance between the deviation and the average as absolutes. The rules for purchase are still the same. That being, the entire candlestick must be below the deviation to purchase and above the take profit to sell. But rather than moving the deviation when the price fluctuates, as the step method does mm -hmm. in cycles, the price method moves the deviation in relation to the average. Mm -hmm. 
and the rules for this are very simple. The purchase price here must be lower than here. That's the only rule. Whereas here, the purchase price must be at least the deviation lower here. So whatever this price is, this one must be at least 1% lower. Whatever this price is, this price must be lower than the previous, but the deviation must be precisely a minimum of 1% from the average. So while this one lowers the deviation to the price action, this one lowers the deviation to the average and forces the price action to adjust to it. It's an opposite approach to the same process. But because of that, the price method does not have a constrained budget. There are no constraints, which means if you search this, and we are going to do so. Notice the max is 40. That's not a coincidence. The max is 40 because more than likely it hit an exit position and got forced out of the market. And it took a calculated forced loss. Let's see if that's the case. And it is. You can see right here, the deviation, 1% below the average. The price action, severely distorted. So, based upon the information we told the price method, we told it specifically, take a hard exit, take a deliberate loss. It did. It then got back into the market at the bottom, to begin the recovery process. So, when you're looking at the price method, as you can see, there's no constraints to budget. There's no limits to how much budget it can consume. If you have a bot, like three commas, that has limited positions, then you have to at a minimum, set that appropriate to your bot's limits. If you don't, then you will have a problem where you could exceed the limitations of your bot and that will cause you to take a loss unexpectedly. This way, you know it's there, you've planned for it, you realize it's there, no, it's not going to make it easier to deal with when it happens. But by planning for an absolute budget, this way you know exactly when your losses are. You can also deliberately decide when it is appropriate to get out early and wait for the recovery. It's not an easy process. But you need to be aware of that if you choose the price method. The price method is extremely aggressive and extremely unpredictable. It can make more profit in the long run. And even in the short run, it can do very well considering the market. But you must understand the risks. It can go very bad very quickly if you don't plan for the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario in this case is a bot or a budget that can't handle the entire amount of accumulation. So understand you will take losses. Understand you need to calculate those losses. Understand that this is a significantly higher risk situation than the step method. 
this is a faster way to profit. But you need to be aware that profiting may not be in your best interests if you have a situation where you simply cannot afford the budget. And that is a very realistic concern. Okay. Now for the purposes of completeness, I'm going to add the analyzer to each. And I'm going to tune it appropriate to both coins. So let's start here. I'm not going to get overly crazy. I'm not going to go out of my way to try to make a super profit with this. I'm simply going to go through the basic settings and give it a responsible result. From the standpoint of which is better. Sometimes this is the only way to make a decision. Is to actually set up two different panels identical to each other and to determine if your risks can handle the various profits or if in fact the profits are worth the risks. So make sure you understand careful testing and analysis is always the forefront of this kind of a situation. There are no shortcuts to deciding which one is best. And if you are in doubt, always stick with the step method. That way you are always guaranteed a precise and fixed budget based upon your deviation. For example, a step method of 4% deviation guarantees your budget will be roughly $260 to $270 maximum. That is important to be aware of. Now that we have this tuned, let's bring up the strategy tester and get an analysis. For the same time frame, the same 17 days, the step method will make $68. So the last 17 days of this analysis, it made $68. Let's go to the price method. And let's make sure I configured it right. And of course I didn't. Okay, now it will reanalyze. Now notice because of the loss, the price method actually took an overall loss. Something to be aware of, something to look at. We went from a near guaranteed profit to a loss. So what happens if I take the boundary up? Right now I have a $1,200 budget. What if I give it a $2,400 budget? And then I make money. And you can see that it took 113 maximum trades over the last 17 days. If you have three commas, you are in deep trouble. And I should say not just three commas, but any platform that has a limited number of positions. This is a consideration you have to make. You must 
be aware. And one of the ways you can do that is to set your exit position to zero when you're first looking. Any coin that goes above 100 positions for any reason will blow your budget out of the water. It will sink you. This is an absolute guaranteed loss right off the top before you've even started. Of course, if you're working with charts, be sure to save them once in a while. Now let's try another coin. Let's go to one of my favorites. One I use all the time. Now this one, of course, 61. So I'm guaranteed to stay under the budget. It has made $453 in three and a half days for this one. Let's put it back on five minutes since that's the most common. Well, this has made a maximum of $36, $423 over the last, excuse me, 36 positions, $423 over the last 17 days. Now, this has made $115 over the last 17 days. And it has made 14 positions. So, as you can see, picking the budget first, figuring out your limitations, whether it's because of your platform or whether it's because of your budget, your risk assessment must be your first priority. You pick the coin appropriate to both of those and make sure you understand the coin itself. Picking a bad coin can be disastrous and cause losses, even with an algorithm that is statistically guaranteed to profit in all conditions except a complete market apocalypse. So be aware of this kind of testing. Check every coin, check every circumstance. If you need to put these up side by side, then do it. Don't underestimate the market. Don't lose track of the fact that this is high risk. There are no guarantees in this market. Make sure you understand that, because it will end badly if you don't. This one's at 46 for a maximum. This one's at 12. This one made $79 in 17 days. This one made $357 in 17 days. This one is guaranteed never to exceed 100, period. The steps are absolute as long as you keep your deviation absolute. If you decide to take on more risk, you can lower the deviation below 1. But no matter what, the system is limited to a deviation no less than 0.3% to account for a slippage that occurs on the internet. So your worst case scenario here is no more than 333 positions ever. That is the maximum number of positions in the most aggressive state you can ever take. You are not guaranteed that here and back analysis has often showed the situations have occurred easily over a thousand positions. The price method could easily consume 10,000 or more dollars on the wrong coin. I'm going to demonstrate the most aggressive state in both cases. Let's put this at the lowest. Let's put this at 2% deviation excuse me, 2% take profit. This will always guarantee. 
No. At 2%, the maximum positions it can handle is 50. Then the coin will be exhausted. But if you go down to 0.3% deviation, then you need to multiply this by 3. So the highest position should be around 150. Now, if you have the budget, you can leave this empty, but I prefer to put it there simply to ensure that I visually see it on the chart. Okay, so now we will do the same thing here. I'm going to set this to the lowest deviation possible, and I'm going to set the profit to 2%. I'm going to leave this at zero just because it's going to recalculate the maximum. So now you see 47 maximum entries at the lowest deviation. But you see that the profit went up extensively with this coin. Even here, the profit is reasonably well for 17 days. So this one coin with a fixed maximum budget of $1,200 will bring in roughly $100 a month. That is more than enough off of one single coin to break even in most cases. You could figure out the remaining 13 days of the month and extrapolate that as a profile or as a ratio of your profit to what your potential is. But for the purposes of this demonstration, you clearly see this is sufficient. Here. Excuse me. And one thing I need to correct here, this has a limit. 2% of 151. So you would take your exit positions of 150 times 11. So this one would, this one would hit 1,500. If you were to go to 1%, take profit, then you would probably need to hit as much as $3,000 roughly. So there's a lot of ways that you can look at this. In fact, let's put this at the maximum. This will be a $3,000 budget. $3,663 round up $3,700 for your absolute maximum worst case scenario and the highest state of aggression. But this one, the price method, no limit. Three days. Three and a half days, technically, four days, $527 profit. But you will have a minimum of $470 exposed at one point based upon that last three-day run. This is guaranteed, the step method, never to exceed your maximum. This is not guaranteed anything except to aggressively accumulate. So be aware of each approach. Be aware of the accumulations and how those accumulations will have a dramatic impact on your budget. When you are first beginning, I always recommend the step method first. Also, if you have a very limited budget, I recommend the step method. It's a way of getting into the market at a very reasonable approach and a very cost conscious approach. You don't need a very deep budget. And in fact, it's very easy to find a coin that you can limit to just two dollars the price method as you can see with the me scrolling through these coins 
very different as much as three or more times the budget take your time look carefully do not take shortcuts now this is an aggressive state personally I personally always stay with a reasonable fixed budget. I typically do not like to exceed $1,200 per coin. In fact, most of the time, this is actually my preferred approach. At $11 a position, 50 positions, I'm only using a maximum budget of $600. So as you can see, my preferred approach is much, much less profit per coin. But it's a much smaller budget with less exposure. Using this approach... I can diversify my portfolio by trading in multiple coins. When you use the price method, you are committing a substantial amount of your budget in hopes that you don't need it. And you have to keep this budget available at all times just in case the worst case scenario does happen. You never know what that worst case scenario may be. For the purposes of simple mathematics, I'm going to use $10 as my position size. So right here, it is already accumulated $540. And because the buys match the maximum, it's not done accumulating. It could very easily accumulate more raising the maximum threshold whereas in the step method my maximum threshold is only forty dollars now i'm not going to get as much obviously the risk reward ratio is significantly different but that's the point can you afford the risk of the price method versus the step method most beginners can afford a risk of $40. No, it's not a lot coming in at the end of the 17 day period, but it is a reasonable risk. Can you afford $540 for only a $79 reward? This is the case where I would not trade this coin at all just because the reward is nowhere as near the level of risk for having this much money exposed. You are going to find differences between coins that are significantly like that. Here, the risk reward. $650 exposure and still accumulating, but a $222 reward. From the standpoint of this, this is roughly one third profit of the total risk. So when this takes place, this does sell off. I have potentially earned one third of my risk. That could be worth it if my risk assessment and budget allowed that kind of a transition. If, however, my risk assessment did not allow that, $70 at risk for a $22 profit. This is a reasonable trade-off for the situation, something that should be carefully considered. I shouldn't need to say this, but I'm going to simply because a lot of times P 
people look at the profit. $47 for basically $120 worth of risk versus $500 for $750 of risk. The reward is over 50% of the risk. That is candy to a child. That's like giving a dog a golden bone and it can cause bad decisions. This is the perfect example where a lot of people are going to take a higher risk than they should because they let greed or fear of missing out grab them. Don't let your budget be swayed. If your budget can't absolutely handle the worst case scenario, don't do it. Basically, at a minimum, round this up to the nearest 10, that gives you 80 positions. Now double it. That will give you a rough budget of $1,600. If you don't have that budget that you can guarantee just for this coin, don't use the price method, period. If you take a risk, yes, you could come out lucky and not blow up your account, or it could end very badly and you could have a very severe and harsh loss. If you can't take that doubling effect, $1,600 in this case, it's not worth the risk. It may look nice, but it will burn you sooner or later, and you will lose all of your profits, and potentially a large portion of your base budget. Make sure when you look at your considerations between the step method and the price method, do not overextend your budget. Make absolutely sure you have the budget requirements as a direct minimum. And I emphasize minimum. The price method has no guarantee that it won't take two or three hundred positions in the right market situation. If you are using three commas, 3C exchange, or any trading platform that has a physical limit of 100 positions maximum, this should worry you. This should make you reconsider very carefully and quite possibly at this level 25 positions is not a very good safe buffer between you and a guaranteed loss. Take the time to make the critical assessments of your budget. Take the time to seriously look at your risks. I personally would not necessarily go for this risk of this coin even though this looks nice, unless I knew absolutely sure I could set aside $1,600 just for this coin and my trading platform could easily handle 160 or more positions. I personally wouldn't touch this coin with a 10-foot pole given what it's gone through lately, but nonetheless, people like to take chances. So, here it is. 190 versus 17. Either way, my opinion, not a good coin, but that is something that you would need to make a careful risk assessment of. If you are a risk taker and you have the excess funds, 
prophet is prophet at the end of the day. Okay, let's see if I can find a coin that is over the top. Well, here's one right here. This is the actual limit of three commas and three C, but the buys are still, the buys are just as high as the max and there's no sign of an upward trend. This is a sideways trend. So if you have three commas or three C exchange, this will wreck you. You've already been wrecked. You're at the end of your rope. There's no going back. This is a loss, period. 10 times less, $32. Let's see the $297 for $1,200. Not bad, but not something I would risk. Not at this level. In order to manage this coin reasonably well, you need at least 200 positions on your bot. Not something I would risk. Not something I would take a chance on. Let's see. Let's go back here. I set this to 2%. I don't think I set this to 2%. I didn't. Let's set it at 2%. Let's see how much that changes it. Well, it does change it. But it's still not something I would want to deal with. It does lower the budget requirements drastically for the profit. Meaning now the risk involved is significantly higher than the reward. But it's still significantly above the step method. Don't take shortcuts. Make careful considerations. $73 for a fixed budget for 17 days is pretty good. $430 for a maximum of 540 positions. This pushes it over 100 if you double it, but it's still not bad. Seven positions right now. That could be iffy. That could be questionable. That could be something that you really need to think about if you have that kind of a taste for risk. So always look at the chart. Always look at how long it holds. What's the probability of it actually taking 100 positions? 17 days is a long time time in a trading world where the market runs 24 7 is your probability of hitting your limit worth the risk of taking a chance on this coin it very well may be and that is something that is a consideration that you need to make as you trade so I'm going to wrap this up here because obviously we can keep going one by one and you're going to be getting the idea of the assessments. The key takeaway, STEP has a guaranteed budget. STEP has a guaranteed limit. STEP has a guaranteed controlled factor. You never have to worry about STEP ever going outside that very specific limit. If you set a deviation to 4%, you will not exceed 25 positions. Your volume will be consumed completely. The coin will be at zero by the end of that maximum position. Step is a dramatic way to control your budget. It's not as profitable as price. But it's consistent, it's reliable, and it factors in a very strong safety net, particularly if you are not used to the 
way the market trades or the volatility of some of the coins. It is there to help make you the best possible choices with the least amount of risk. Price method. If you've got the cash to burn and you've got the hardware to support it, it can be very lucrative. It does not have any constraints. There are no budget limits. There's nothing that says that it can't take a thousand positions to turn a coin into a profit. The risks must equal the rewards. If you have a coin that takes 75 positions and you have a payout of $500, if your trading platform can handle it and you have the budget for it, that is really a nice situation to be in. It is consistent. It is reliable. But it is not predictable. That is the one thing you must always make sure you keep in mind when you're working with the price method, especially if you're using a trading platform like three commas or three C exchange. If you have a limit in your positions, I can guarantee you at some point you will be absolutely wrecked and whatever profits you have gained, you will lose and there is a very high probability you will lose your base budget on top of it. Take very careful consideration and analysis of both methods. If you've never traded or you don't understand the averaging process to the fullest, this is high risk and high potential of losing everything you have. The step method is the best place to start, especially if you are a beginner. It is the safest place to start. Safest is not always the best reward, but it's also not the highest risk. But you have to start someplace and you have to learn the ropes. This is the best way to do it, where you can limit your exposure while you are learning. Whichever approach you choose, don't take shortcuts. Check your analysis. Check your figures. Make sure your risk is worth the reward. If you're risking $1,200 and you're only getting $70 reward, that may not be a very good choice. Always, always be careful with your analysis. Never take shortcuts. Never, ever substitute careful analysis for fear and greed. You will lose if you do. Until next time.